This video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. If you want to protect yourself online, use the link in the description to get 86% off a three-year subscription and three extra months free. Disney princesses are known for being old-fashioned. I mean, they come from fairy tales and folklore, so it's not surprising that a story that's centuries old doesn't represent modern-day society. And that's why as society changes, so do Disney princesses. There's a huge difference between the earlier princesses and the 90s ones who were given more agency and drive, reflecting a society that embraced feminism more than it once had. I am not a prize to be won! There's an inherent absurdity in trying to make an antiquated fairy tale princess into a modern day girl boss, but I don't really see it as an inherently bad thing. Fairy tales are here to stay, and the ways in which they change over time aren't something to be afraid of. And for many people, liking Disney princesses doesn't mean that they want to rule a kingdom. They just feel comforted by these movies and archetypes that they grew up with. And this doesn't just apply to Disney princesses. The list of official Disney princesses is smaller than you might think, and it's a bit confusing. There are Disney characters who are princesses, and then there's the Disney princess brand. And the lineup has changed a lot over the years, and there are even characters who have been associated with the lineup, but not explicitly included in it. But regardless of whether or not they're on an official list, all of these characters represent traditions of how women are portrayed on screen. And those traditions change. Disney heroines of today don't really fit the roles that they used to. But when did Elsa become a lesbian? A new campaign is underway targeting one of the beloved characters of the popular Disney movie, Frozen. Friends, this is evil. Just evil. I, I wonder if people are thinking, you know, I think this cute little movie is going to indoctrinate my five-year-old to be a lesbian. Frozen fans are demanding Disney give Elsa a girlfriend. Did you say gay? No! No comment from Disney. 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 I had to remind myself, oh, you know what a more important thing is? It's none of my business. Frozen premiered on November 19th, 2013, and after its general theatrical release on the 22nd, it quickly became a hit. Though it wasn't the company's first musical of the 2000s, it was the one that really brought Disney fairy tales back into the mainstream. For many, The Princess and the Frog and Tangled fell under the radar, and Frozen was the company's return to form that showed that they could still make musicals as good as the 90s Disney Renaissance ones. And it broke records. It earned $1.28 billion at the box office, it held the title of the highest grossing animated film for nearly six years, and it's still considered among the highest grossing films of all time. But something was different. Unlike other Disney fairy tales, the main theme of Frozen wasn't about falling in love and being whisked away for a happily ever after. It was about sisterhood and family. Sure, Anna has a romantic happy ending, but not only is her lovey-dovey personality joked about throughout the movie, but the villain is her fiancé, who specifically took advantage of her eagerness to marry before getting to know someone. In contrast, Elsa isn't burdened by romance. She has her own struggles, but she's a unique Disney heroine in the sense that she doesn't have a romantic interest. Sure, Brave had come out the year before, and Merida also didn't have a love interest, but there's something significant about it happening for a heroine in an animated musical, the style Disney is most known for. Cue the speculation. Frozen was released during what I'd now describe as the peak Tumblr era of my life. I was a freshman in college, and at the time, pretty much all of my good friends both online and in person were people I had met on the site. And for the first time in my life, I was not only learning a lot about queer history, but I was also embroiled in conversations about representation and specifically what good representation looked like. These were the types of discussions I never really had offline, but the online community was so hyper-focused on them, and I felt welcome. When I saw Frozen, I didn't think about any of that. I was a huge fan of The Princess and the Frog and Tangled, so I didn't think of it as the start of a new era, but just another great movie. But then I went on Tumblr and saw something very different. I saw Elsa being praised in various parts of the queer community who saw themselves in her storyline. Having special powers that isolate you from society, having to go on a journey of self-discovery, finding your place in the world, it can all be mapped onto queer experience. And specifically, her lack of romantic interest in the film made her a quick icon in the queer community, specifically in the ace and arrow communities. For those who also felt pressured by society to fall in love, have sex, and have a partner, Elsa became an asexual, aromantic icon. But that wasn't the only way queer people saw Elsa. Some people saw her magic powers as an allegory for being lesbian, bisexual, or queer. So she was claimed by those parts of the community, too. 
And while I was obsessing over Let It Go like many others in the months after Frozen was released, I thought of it as a queer anthem. Don't let them in, don't let them see Be the good girl you always have to be Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know Well now they know At the time, I was realizing that I am non-binary, and I empathized. I didn't want to be the good boy that I was raised to be. In fact, I never felt like a boy, and I certainly didn't feel like a man. In a way, it reminded me of reflection from Mulan. You are so much more than what others expect you to be. Let it go, let it go, can't hold it back anymore, let it go. Let it go, turn away and slam the door. Elsa's anthem is a powerful response to an unwelcoming society. Part of her breakthrough is being okay with walking away from where she was raised. But the other part is her being okay with herself. And when she has already spent her whole life being ashamed of her powers, the second is more difficult. So she lets it go and gets away from those holding her back and putting her life at risk. But running away and building your own ice castle isn't the only way to stay safe. And if you want to protect yourself online, you should use Atlas VPN, the sponsor of today's video. Did you know that when you're online, not only can your internet service provider see every website you visit, but you're also one unlucky connection away from having your personal and financial data stolen by a hacker? This can be avoided with a virtual private network, commonly known as a VPN. A VPN makes all of your internet traffic travel through an encrypted tunnel. This way, it protects you from spying, public Wi-Fi dangers, and hides your IP address and your online activities. Atlas VPN also has helpful tools like their data breach monitor. As you can see, just entering in my email address shows how many times my password has been spread around in data leaks. And it can also notify you if any future leaks happen so you can change your password before it's too late. There are a lot of VPNs out there, but Atlas gives you the best value for your buck. And right now they're running a huge discount. All viewers of Dream Sounds can get 86% off a three-year subscription. That's just $139 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And if you use our link, you'll also get three extra months free. If you want to get the deal while there's still time, go to the description to check out our unique link. Not only will you protect yourself online, but you'll also help the show keep going. But anyway, back to the video. Elsa lets it all go to free herself and understand that who she is isn't something to be ashamed of. And I think that's a beautiful sentiment. It's no surprise to me that it's resonated with queer people. To learn more about Elsa's queer coding, I spoke with Dr. Zaprina Mitamaya. Could you just briefly introduce yourself and the work that you do? I teach American history and culture at the University of Kassel, Germany. My research has focused on Disney theme parks. I wrote a book about the cultural history of Disneyland, and otherwise I do a lot of work on film and television and the Walt Disney Company at large. I've done a blog post about the queer coding of Elsa and Frozen, and also doing a bit more work on this right now. So that's why I'm here. (laughs) Could you talk about why you think queer people have latched onto Elsa as a character so much? I think she's sort of the epitome of what queer coding is. Going back into the history of film when, you know, queer representation wasn't possible because it was outright censored by US authorities, for instance. There were always texts that were queer, but in ways that only queer people would notice they were. And I think Elsa, even though she exists in a time where that's no longer, you know, a necessity, She's queer in ways that we notice. She's being told that she is special because of her powers, but these powers are potentially evil. And she's actively told by her parents to hide away these powers. And that obviously has devastating consequences for herself because she feels incredibly insecure and she has to hide these powers that want to come out whether she wants them to or not. When we see her sing Let It Go, that's when we see her transform herself. That's when we see her change her dress, like she's changing her outward the appearance during the song as well and is building this massive ice castle so she's building her own space while the song is going on it's such an anthem of like you know coming into your own and um, recognizing your own power that again is super resonating with the queer community in so many ways and I mean I think the, the, the beauty of like musical theater specifically is that songs are always there to you know make space for emotions that are inside of people 
And I mean, usually when people start singing in musicals, it's because the emotion is too strong to be, you know, like actually to be spoken. It has to be sung at this point. I think Frozen 2 really deepens the queer coding of her character. When I first saw it, as a non-binary person, I saw it as like very trans. Show yourself and this sort of ongoing motif that she has to fight throughout the whole film and that she can't really, this sort of dissatisfaction with her life and this feeling that something's not right. And so I guess what is your take on how Frozen 2 changes or elaborates on the queer coding of her character? I think it definitely does. I mean, Into the Unknown and then it's Show Yourself in the end, right? They sort of bookend her journey. And Into the Unknown, I think, is also, it seems to resonate with like a variety of queer people in different ways. Just like her character does, I think, which is important with Elsa, because you said, you know, she doesn't have a romantic interest. Obviously, she's also very important to the uh, asexual and aromantic community for that very reason. So I think that's also another layer of her character that's important to note. But Into the Unknown generally is about, again, that sort of dissatisfaction with who you are or your environment's not supporting who you are. I mean, she's in a very supportive place at the beginning of the film because she's surrounded by her family and just the queen and it's, everything is fine, but yet something doesn't work. And you can easily read that as like, oh, she's stuck in sort of still a cis heteronormative environment because I mean, the other thing that's going on is like Christoph trying to propose to Anna. So it's again sort of this like very normative space she's in that she doesn't fit into. But I do think that what matters to me in sort of further reading this as queer was also the casting choices they made because her mother is played by Evan Rachel Wood and Evan Rachel Wood has been out as bisexual for a long time. And people know that, at least queer people know who their mm -hmm. fellow queer <laughs> people are if they've come out because there's still not that many of us like in terms of like representation and seeing out people in like Hollywood and in the entertainment industry. So I think it's also interesting that there's a dialogue between two female voices and there's even though one of them is her mother but we only see her mother as another young woman so it's not like a maternal figure per se. And then obviously like the end credits version of Into the Unknown is sung by Brendan Urie and Brendan Urie is also bisexual so it's you know, and he's very out queer in his whole demeanor and his personality and they recorded a music with you with him and, and I mean obviously something resonates with him too with this song so I don't think that's like an accidental choice. So Elsa seems pretty queer coded, but unlike other queer coded characters I've talked about on this channel, she's unique in the sense that there's no document or quote saying the specific intention of those working on the movie. But in a way, that's not really important. We might not know if any of the artists working on the films think about her in that way, but we do know that many queer fans do, and that's what makes Elsa so interesting. But when the original Frozen came out, not everyone thought of Elsa as a powerful queer icon. Maybe there's something very evil happening here, Steve. If I was the devil, what would I do? Do something really, really, really evil. I, I wonder if people are thinking, you know, I think this cute little movie is going to indoctrinate my five-year-old to be a, a lesbian. Some people saw Elsa as queer, but not in a good way. Cue offensive stereotypes about queer people being evil, predatory, and supposedly destroying society. These prejudices aren't new, but they do bring up a point about representation. In societies where queer people are excluded from narratives by default, even just having a queer character can be viewed as pushing an agenda, and the implications of that go beyond just media. When your very existence is misconstrued as a threat, society isn't a safe place to be. And that's why Disney's relationship to the queer community is so important because they do have an influence on mainstream culture and values. And it's that influence and reputation that makes something like Elsa being queer turn into a huge controversy. Before Frozen 2 came out, many fans wanted Elsa to be more explicitly queer, which is where the hashtag Get Elsa a Girlfriend comes in. It started on Twitter in 2016 and quickly opened up a larger discussion that even got attention from stars from the movie, though their responses were enthusiastic but vague. And since there was a bunch of conservatives already angry about Disney's supposed gay agenda, it didn't take long for a counter movement to be created with its own hashtag, Charming Prince for Elsa. At this point, for many people, Elsa's queer coding wasn't just speculation, it was practically canon, for both the angry conservatives who saw it as evil and the queer people who saw it as representation. But Disney didn't say much about it, 
And leading up to the movie, the stars of Frozen continued to give vague answers about Elsa. I took the same undercurrents of the movie and I had to remind myself, oh, you know what a more important thing is? It's none of my business. As more info started to trickle out before the release of Frozen 2, fans noticed something. A new character named Honey Marin, who seemed very much like she could be a potential romantic interest for Elsa. But much to the disappointment of many fans, when the movie came out, it was revealed that Honey Marin was nothing more than just a side character, which seems weird given the heartfelt conversation she has with Elsa. Given what we now know about the film's story being hastily put together, it seems like Honey Marin may have been a character left over from another storyline, maybe even one in which Elsa was explicitly queer. And that's kind of where it's left off. Since Frozen 2 came out, there hasn't really been any update on Elsa's story or character. Even though Get Elsa a Girlfriend is no longer trending, the outrage and controversy still lingers, and it's been referenced in pop culture. Well, I don't know whether we're heading north, south, gay, or west. Did you say gay? No! As of right now, there's no word of a Frozen 3 on the horizon, and Disney hasn't mentioned anything about Elsa being queer-coded. Despite that, though, she remains a queer icon for many. However, not everyone agrees about which type of queer icon she is. She has a strong presence in asexual and aromantic communities, while some people empathize with her from a lesbian and bisexual perspective. The queer reading of her is pretty open, and I don't see why she couldn't be an aromantic ace lesbian. But then again, when I first heard Into the Unknown, my first thought was gender dysphoria. I think it was partly me projecting my own experience onto the movie, but the idea of everything being okay except for a vague voice nagging really resonated with how I experienced dysphoria as a non-binary person. However, I've also seen gay people resonate with that song from a closeted gay perspective. There doesn't have to be just one way for Elsa to be queer. All we know is that as of right now, she doesn't have a romantic interest, and that can mean many different things. I think Disney giving Elsa any type of explicit queer identity would be a wonderful step forward for representation with one of the company's most well-known characters. But as of right now, all we have is speculation. And I don't really mind that. As we continue advocating for better, more explicit representation, I'm reminded of the fact that queer people don't and have never needed permission to see themselves in art or media, and that's been a huge part of our history. So at the moment, it's vague. Elsa could be anything. But to the queer community, she's everything. Let her know, let her know These beautiful things I feel I want is real So here I am And queer I'll stay Let the storm rage on The cold never bothered me anyway